All right, so we watched Birdman for the first time. Is like uh, 2014 was really a great year for movies because you had uh, Nightcrawler, which had a great electronic soundtrack. You had uh, the Hotel in Budapest. I can't think of what his name, but it was a great year for movies. And uh, this is uh, one of those movies like I really wanted to see. I just didn't get the time to see it. And then I thought, well, this is probably the perfect time to uh, to watch it. It's uh, I it's kind of got that feel where you can have like uh, your fandom can watch it and your non fandom people can watch it and kind of relate to each other. Uh, it's more about the struggle with the actor. Some parts very painful to watch because you don't know is this the deep inner struggling that we're seeing from the actor well to come to find out uh alexandro uh or alejandro um he um wasn't thinking of michael keaton when he wrote this this was just uh an actor that he thought about what they would might struggle through so it kind of puts my mind a little at ease because I don't want to think that's what Michael Keaton in real life is struggling. He's actually Birdman. Yeah, exactly. But it really... There's a lot of interesting concepts in this movie. Yeah, sure. exactly. But it puts my mind a little at ease that, you know, he kind of... I Because I... And what I've seen in interviews, he's never struggled with the fact that he left being Batman. I mean, he left Batman because he wanted Burton to direct. And as we discussed in the previous uh uh review we talked about burton left but with that sacrifice of burton leaving then you get uh losing michael keaton as well so that's where he could have had you know a lot of people might think well this was great he, he gave up a lot of money but the truth of the matter is i don't think he ever was hurting for money it just he he wouldn't be the same uh uh superstar anymore you know that we we know him as um and it just you know the thing is is like i said i i never liked him as batman <laughs> be honest. i just don't see him as batman he's not really bruce wayne but you know what the heck you know those movies made a lot of money and he got to feed his kids and that's the important thing <laughs> But but then we get this film, which is, shows you uh, his broad range of acting. And we but we've got so many other actors we got to talk about too. We can't just throw Michael Keaton out there. You got Edward Norton. You get the girl from. Uh, you get Emma Stone is in it as well. Does some great performances, and so you really can't just stop there with Michael Keaton. So your reaction. Uh, is it everything that you thought it was going to be, or, I mean... Okay, so, <clears throat> whenever you chose this movie, how, how it happens is, uh, you send me a trailer first, and I watch the trailer, and I'll be like, does this seem like something that I'll want to review? And I watched yeah. it, and it seemed... The trailer versus the film... The film was a lot more centered around uh, the actors and how the actors feel and, you know, behind the scenes of this play. And then I feel like the trailer made me feel like this movie was going to be about somebody starring in some kind of superhero film. So it was really weird because... It, it didn't make too much sense to me. Like, I feel like the trailer watching it, thinking it was going to be the superhero film, like they were going to be doing a superhero film kind of thing in the trailer, as opposed to this guy doing his Broadway play and having internal struggles as an actor. But also we get this weird... What would you call it? I don't know how to explain it. His internal monologue, you, you have times where you kind of, it kind of related to the Joker to where it's like, we don't know if this is real. Like, he's got, right. like, the telekinetic powers. You're like, is this real? Is like, So it was a lot different than the trailer. 
but I did enjoy the film. I right. forgot what the question was, but that was my answer. To well, say. I mean, so basically, <laughs> no, it was a lot different than what you expected. Yeah, it, it's, it was a lot different than what I originally expected the film to be. Then again, I didn't have too much knowledge of it going in, so, right. you know. Well, I knew about the film, and I, I knew what it was going to be about, and I'm, I'm quite surprised. Like I said, I really thought that Birdman was about Michael Keaton's struggle with him, you know, not going on to being the, you know, the Batman in the third films. But like I said, it's nothing really like that. And in fact, uh, I was watching an interview where they, in the script, they accidentally put Batman instead of Birdman in a scene. <laughs> and Michael Keaton had a lot of faith in Alejandro, and he thought, well, uh, maybe, you know, I should let it go, but I just don't think the audience is going to, you know, understand why are they putting Batman here with Birdman? Is, is this more personal than I thought it was or whatever? So he went to uh, Alejandro and he said, uh, there's this Batman part. What's the deal with this? And he said, oh, no, that's not supposed to be in there. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh. I bet he was really upset. Like, you trying to call me out, bro? Like, what is this? Uh, yeah, so it, it's it, it, it's crazy because, um, of course, it's like um, the, uh, you know, with all this, because I, I really, to me, I, you know, like I said, it, I, <sighs> yeah, it's painful to watch. I mean, anybody who creates something. You, you you're watching you, you, it's called you know i call it self wear and cuz it does become uh you know seems like are we is is this character being self aware and birdman is he realizing cuz here's the things that you're getting the division and i think Alejandro works and i works out i'm wondering if he's about the same age as michael keaton trying to adjust with this new world cuz like when celebrity status uh, came about, you know, it's like uh, it's a little different in the rock music world that I grew up in versus the Hollywood world. I mean, uh, I feel like with dealing with rock music and pop music, we have a little bit more freedom of thinking than you, and and a little bit more freedom. And uh, we used to have a lot more or less limits the, until you know Pepsi and all them other people came in and took over the industry altogether. Whereas in Hollywood. It's like this is the way it, it is, and you can't go around it. But you know, like I said, during the '80s, when the blockbusters and again bring up blockbusters, this was an achievement that you were never going to uh, get. Okay, if you did not have any backing, if you didn't have a management, if you don't have distribution, if you didn't have a studio backing you, you could not make a movie. You could not be famous. That's just the way it was. And then somewhere along the line comes YouTube and it changes all that. Here comes Facebook and it changes on that. There are celebrities out there, folks. I can tell you right now, been in the industry for hundreds, of, not hundreds of years, about 50 years, I would say. <laughs> I almost said 100, yeah. 50 years. And these people, Facebook page, have like 500 followers. And they have made multi-million dollar movies. They have been in TV shows. They have been in lots and lots of things. And that world is different to them. Prince said this. He thought he never uploaded his uh, music to the internet. He said because he thought it was going, it was a fad. Ten years later, the man is dead, and now all his stuff is on the internet because <laughs> his family's dead. Well, he did. We do whatever we want to. <laughs> but that's a struggle that you got to think these people are dealing with. I mean, and I'm not saying anything bad about it. like like you. you we, we mentioned a craft. It's like, here's let me give you an example of what you're talking about. Imagine a doctor who's gone to school for eight years and he's... And, he, and he's become a surgeon, and then five years under another doctor, then ten years, eventually gets his own practice so he can do pl uh, plastic surgery. And it's been 20 years now, now he's got his own practice so he can do uh, 
you know, boob jobs in uh, L.A., right? But it took him 20 years to get there. And one day, a dude walks up out of nowhere and said, I'm a plastic surgeon, too. <laughs> Just like, oh, okay, that's fine. And and I, I'm using that analogy because that's what celebrities are dealing with right now. When, uh, you know, and, and there was a little break, a little rebellion when Quentin Tarantino and uh, guys like that came in. But it's really like you wake up one morning and Charlie bit my finger gets a million likes. And all it is is some dumb baby bit another kid's finger, and now he's going to college <laughs> on that money. I, 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 that's that's life. That's the way it is. You know, Ernest made millions of dollars too for doing toilet humor. But you know, I'm just giving you an idea. I'm, I'm tired. I'm done with ranting with this. But um, let. Where do you want to start? Because. We both probably have mixed reactions. I, I mean, obviously, we like the film. I mean, technically, let's go technically wise. It's a perfect film. Here's the bottom line, I, and I'll let you go ahead and uh, talk about this and w what you what you think about the film and what you think it's about. Uh, what I was going to say, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, um, on a technical level, it's great. Okay, here's here's what I'm going to say. If you're going to pour your heart out, if you're going to be deep and in emotion uh and you're going to put your heart out on the screen do it in an entertaining way like this film did it that's what i gotta say that's my biggest problem if you look at films in the past i'm gonna put my heart on the screen as an actor this is what i struggle with and blah 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 and everybody's like <sighs> but this was not like that it was like here's my heart and you're like Look at it move! It's moving around! Look how the emotion is on sky! It's crazy! And it's, it you just keeps your attention. I'm done. You go with it. <laughs> Run. Okay. Uh, all I can say... Er, sorry. I should probably start off with I never thought I was going to see the day where Michael Keaton would have more tidy whitey underwear scenes than Birdman himself, but... That, that was interesting for sure. Um, <laughs> so, so okay. Wh what do you want me to do? You want me to say what I think of this or you want me to start with the plot? I, I just want you to see, Yeah, that's just... I don't think we're going to do much about the plot, I'll be honest with you. I want to mm -hmm. talk and focus on the actors, technical, and what, you, what your, your, your thoughts on the film. Okay. Well, I think... There's a lot of things that I think. Um, I think this definitely follows him and the different things that he struggles with. And I feel like every time he's talking to himself in the mirror, he's always alone. He's always hearing this other voice, this bird man, like talking back to him and everything. And he has all of these other vulnerable scenes where it's just like, you can see that he's really being worn down and I feel like that really connects to, sorry, I'm having a hard time verbalizing it. I got a lot of Joker vibes from this movie. Like I know this movie came out before the Joker movie did, but I got a lot of like, I didn't know what it was truly about. So whenever, the well, supernatural would happen like he'd display some telekinesis powers or something or if he even was like you know flying through the air i didn't know what was real i didn't know if this was like him going off in his head or if he's displaying some kinds of mental illness or if it's showing that he as an actor is starting to well not be able to tell the difference anymore between reality and these okay okay fantasy he, he, here, here, here's what i would suggest is in uh, watching the film like said what do you feel when these things happen and maybe apply the feelings to what is happening meaning like when he's flying is that not a metaphor of, of an emotion 
Yeah. When he takes it really is. That's what I'm trying to say. Is the like for instance when he controls the cigarette case. He's taking when he con- what? When he, he controls out. a cigarette case. He's controlling. Yeah. He's in control. And that's what I, the visuals are there for emotions and what the actor is feeling at the time. And, you know, it's like after, I mean, like he gets drunk and then he kind of, uh, he's bitter, he's upset. And then he has this decision in his mind that maybe I ought to go back being Birdman again. That's my decision. I'm going to be Birdman again. Then he's 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 emotionally high, and that's what he's gonna do. And then he just and it gives him more confidence. Go back, do the film, do what he wants to do, because he figures out this is what I'm gonna do. After I do this, I'm gonna do Birdman, right? And yeah, that's what I see. It's it's there's a terminology. I think it's magical realm, but that's what I think those things. It's like I said, if you're gonna put your heart out there and your emotions out there do it in an entertaining way is like uh see what the actor is feeling like uh every decision that you make either right makes you rise above the occasion or it makes you below the occasion i i i've kind of had these moments here recently not to put my personal uh, effects that's the reason why this pain is so this film is really painful at me at this time because I'm going through a lot of self awareness at this time and it's really really rough watching this because at the same time you know because you know like I've got to make a decision on certain things of where to go forward and where to be strong and where to be open uh, uh, with people and that's what I see when I see this film is it kind of you know a lot of people saying you know I don't understand what you're trying to say okay when you you emotionally fly, you're soaring above the clouds. That's an emotion. When you're able to take control and you use telekinetic powers, it means I'm taking control of the situation. That's what these metaphors are. And I don't. And Ali's uh, uh, Alejandro, he's not going to help you. He don't want to do interviews. He said, "This is the film. Take it or leave it." I did it in two months. I filmed, uh, you know, I filmed and I had people practice in two months. People did this on their break and I gave you this. And this is what I feel about what an actor is going through. Take it the way you see it. The ending. How do you feel about the ending? It's what you see. Because he knows that his art is subject to the people who watch it. And if you... Right, exactly. And that if you see... What you see with the flying scene, or if what you see with the telekinetic powers, if what you see is what you feel, that's what he wants. It's like there on this film, there are no good guys, there's no bad guys. These are just human beings acting as human. And I got that much from the interviews is the way the actors was on this. So I don't know. Um Let's go into these acting, because right? this is very important here. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to go into much plot. Go watch it, guys. Like I said, because it's one of these films, like, if you're an artist, like I said, I, you know, playing music, making videos, doing photography, all three of these things. These are things I've created in my life. And do I understand what this guy's going through? Hell yeah. I do. I mean, I can I can sit there and pour my heart out on times where I I backed up on lighting. I've dealt with divas. I've dealt with crap. I've dealt with people accusing me of things that I've never done, and and then still take pride in my art. Yes, I relate to this, and yes, I do get upset when Charlie bites a finger and gets millions of views, and I bust my ass and put my heart on the line. Yes, I get upset. And I understand what he's dealing with. But the point is, I had to, you know, I've always come to the point is, why do I do it? Because if I enjoy doing it, then why stopping me? Yeah, I wish I had snotty nose, diaper, 
kids running around and all that stuff. And I know that's true happiness. But folks, it, it's not going to happen. But, you know, I'm not going to sit in my cabin or sit in my uh, condo or sit in any apartment and be bitter about it. I'm going to pick up a camera. I'm going to pick up a guitar. And I'm going to create something. And that's going to be my baby. And if you like it, that's fine. If you don't like it, that's fine. The point is, I did something while you sitting here just sitting watching. And I think that's what I want to do. And if you don't like it, that's fine as well. But I, I understand this pain, and that's what this movie's about. If you haven't created Jack in your life, I don't think you're going to get it. I don't think you're going to sit there and say, I understand. I don't understand it. Now i got to go change the diapers on my baby. That's fine. But someone who's poured their heart out in a book or a novel or a cosplay, you're going to get it. You're going to understand what's going on here. Which act? Too powerful stuff. Yeah, which actor do you want to go with? Um, let me think. Who did you relate to? I really one? like... Well, the actor that got me to watch this film or to look forward to watching this film was Zach Galifianakis and because he's usually in like the funnier films and I, the, I thought this was an interesting role for him to play he did really well uh but Emma Stone and Edward Norton were two really important supporting characters that I could I could go with yeah wait well, you, you, okay. who, who do you want to go with uh, I'll do Emma Stone, I guess. Okay. What about her character? So, basically, they describe her character as, uh, they give her a little bit of background that she's the daughter of, um, I want to say Burden Man, I don't know. I don't <laughs> Reagan, just name. Reagan, Reagan, Reagan. Reagan. <laughs> Reagan. She was the daughter of Reagan, and he really wasn't present in her life whenever she was younger and uh pretty much from other context context you get that she grew up missing that sort of connection with her father and ended up getting into like substance abuse and is freshly out of rehab and now that she's out of rehab her father is trying to make somewhat of a relationship with her but you can tell that they're both very broken and there's hasn't really been much healing after the event of him be, not being present in her life for so long um I really enjoyed her character because there was a lot of instances where I could relate to her. Uh, she was technically working there on the production with him because that was like her job. And I'm pretty sure like she, you know, was freshly out of rehab. She didn't have anything else to really go be doing and everything. But I feel like she felt trapped in that situation and that's why she escaped all the time to the roof and she might be felt trapped in her position as reagan's daughter since he was birdman and she couldn't really like get out of his shadow i feel in a way to be her own self and i know a lot of people who have dealt with different things like uh let's say they have a celebrity parent and they feel like they can't measure up or uh sibling that you know they can't ever measure up to and that person you know feels like they have to like turn to drugs or something like that and i, I just feel like her character was really real in that sense um she's also very you can tell she's very broken by the way that she talks to the other people on set uh yeah yeah um yeah she, her job she was an assistant for her father which means she mm -hmm. had to, you know make it run errands for him um, and uh, with her, Edward Norton's character is probably one of the most interesting characters, but the way he described the way they decided to play him was because Edward Norton is known to be complicated to work with, so he made himself a, like say, a larger-than-life Edward Norton. Basically, 
Wow, he yeah. Made himself to be, and I'm like, golly, if he's just this little bit difficult to work with, then, you know, I, I would not want to work with this guy. I wouldn't even want to talk to him. <laughs> he <laughs> seems like a nice guy. I never heard that about Um, Of course, one thing, keep in mind, all these actors here... The uh, well, I, I, I uh, uh, well, the main ones. Uh, I can, I don't know if Zach Galifianakis is he was he in a superhero film? Is he what was he in a superhero film? Superhero film? Mm, I don't think he's been in any superhero films. No. Okay. All right. Well, he, he, no. There's a lot of films that I I would love to see of his that are really, what do you call it? They're kind of very artistic, like this film. He just doesn't do The Hangover, you know. Hangover is just one of those films where it's just mm -hmm. silly or whatever. I mean, you basically got to get hung over to like it. But the, uh, uh, I was trying to say, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, going back to the superhero thing. Let me try to explain what I was trying to say here. Edward Norton was the Hulk. What? Yes, he was the Hulk in a Hulk movie. We used to, we used to call it Hulk for girls. <laughs> you, gotta, you don't believe me, do you? No way. Come yeah, on. he was the Hulk. He played uh, Bruce Banner with, uh, I believe... When was this? What year was this? 2000 and something. We used to call that one the Hulk for girls because it was really, really, because it was really romantic and stuff. It wasn't really the Hulk. And that's another thing, guys. I get the uh, uh, I, I, reason why I'm not a big Avengers fan because I would like, I told people, I said, the Hulk is what's the reason why I don't like the Avengers because in real life he would have to be put down because he killed people. Yeah. And everybody's like, and that's what makes me so mad. It's like, and when you get to the Civil War, it's like, well, you know, Hulk killed people. And it's like, well, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, yes, if he's got a power he can't control, it's like giving someone a nuclear missile and say, oops, I hit that nuclear button, dang, <laughs> well, it happens, he just, he can't help hitting that nuclear missile, it's just something that's part of his structure, but anyways, he was the Hulk, Emma Stone was, uh, in the Spider Man movie, Spider Man One, Spider Man Two. Yeah, she was uh, Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy, and then Michael Keaton was Batman. Mind blown. Pretty crazy, right? So let's let's uh, like I said, I. Because, like I said, uh, as far as pot, guys, uh, I'll, I'll sum it up so you guys don't get confused, okay? All right. Actor trying to put on a play, having problems, the end. Okay. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. So, forget all this stuff. This, this was filmed at the St. James uh, Theater. It's in uh, New York. All uh, now, I'm not for sure. Every set is from St. James, but it's a wonderful set. This is supposed to be a one shot, like a handy cam shot, like everybody talks about in Goodfellas and Halloween. If you guys watch Halloween, this Halloween, uh, one of the first steady cam, and I said handy cam, slap me. One of the first steady cam shots you'll see that is. Uh, Pure one shot for 15 to 20 minutes is, of course, the opening for Halloween. And people talk about it being a good fellow shot. There are places, though, that had clever editing, like when Michael Myers puts on his mask, that it was actually edited. So, But still try to look like it was a one-shot take. Now, that's what this film does, is the idea was Alejandro wanted to have a one shot take with all the film. So the technical side, this is one of the best technical films you'll ever see. You see a steady cam that is set up and every scene they would set this up right. They did this in two months. They had like one month to prepare and then one month to shoot. It's done like you would uh, film in a play. 
We see some strong acting by Michael Keaton. We see some strong acting by Edward Norton. We see some strong acting by Emma Stone. Zach Galifianakis has um, like one scene, really, two or three scenes. And he's just this jerk manager, pretty much. But. Who's your daddy? 